Greetings dear friends, I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the BMW A60. The body is unique in that the design by Chris Bankel turned out to be surprisingly decent. Unlike the earlier E65, the car looks really dynamic and it is not remembered for its ugliness. Another innovation is the expensive use of aluminum, high trench seals and plastics in construction. With steel everything is clear, the car is simply lighter and stronger, but with aluminum here, as they say, annealed. The fact is that the entire front part is made of aluminum. Not only suspension glasses or mud flaps with fenders and hood, but everything, including the side members, cups, the upper part of the engine shield and the subframe. This made it possible to lighten the car and put big motors under the hood without compromising handling, but added many surprises for fans of new technologies performed by BMW. First, in the event of the disaster, recovery will be expensive or very expensive, if only because aluminum parts are not cheap and are not repaired in a regular service. Most repair shops will not be able to hold them together and pay them. You need a service that car that can weld, rivet and glue aluminum parts so not even every dealership body shop is suitable for refurbishment. And very often the BMW owner will have to contact the body shops of competitors in the premium segment. For example, an Audi dealer, since they have been working with aluminum for a long time and there is more equipment. However, the business is slowly moving forward and aluminum technologies are going to the masses. Maybe in about 5 years an average body shop will finally learn how to glue aluminum parts and rivet them together. As far as the quality of the interior elements is considered, there were no problems here. 10 years old cars, which are in good cans, can still boast of a factory like interior. The interiors are reliable, made up for centuries. Well, or not for centuries, but for 15 or 20 years. But the buttons are wiped off and the steering wheel and the contact zones of the passenger compartment and the driver, the seat with door cards, are worn out on heavily running cars. The electrics of the interior are mostly reliable, only the quality of the panoramic sunroof mechanism on the E61 station wagons are the rear window brush on them cause great complaints. Small things such as a small resource of the stove fan, sometimes malfunctioning climate virus, the quick of the steering column and photo photoformic mirrors is not even worth remembering. The main trouble of all cars is that part of the electronics that is tied to the iDrive and is responsible for most serious functions. In addition to the banal wear of sensors, for example, in the steering column module, temperature sensors and the like, the system malfunctions due to wiring faults, blocks on the bus, errors of the controller itself, moreover there is no dipstick, but a faulty oil level sensor will allow you to calmly ruin the motor. The situation is worse than with Windows 15 years ago. You need to update every year, when glitches are replaced by others, and there is no end inside to the problem. Moreover, these problems are by no means a penny, the opinion of a friend of the owner said. After 100,000, I stopped counting this as a year and a half. This includes the cost of searching for failed electronics and buying new units, which, by the way, are not necessarily successful. Standard diagnostics are not always capable of giving an accurate diagnosis. So we cannot do without a truly understanding mastery and a dealer often cannot help, despite the excellent technical equipment. Of course, all the problems multiply a um, hundredfold in the presence of collective farming, abnormal music, alarms when the interior is floated at dry cleanness, and failures of hedges and glass. The climate sometimes makes a fool like that. Sometimes cars drive for years without breakdowns, sometimes they are unlucky, and it happens that a more recent copy is more troublesome. You should not rely on restyling. The frequency of occurrence and the number of problems in the electrical part is approximately the same on all cars, except for the very first two years of production. Despite the expected fragility of aluminum suspension, overall reliability is in order. All original components run for a long time, even on very uneven roads, unless, of course, you cannot you count the stabilizer struts. But the mechatronics of the chassis doesn't live so long. On request, cars in the dynamic drive configuration were equipped with active anti-roll bars, and there was at least one problematic point in the design of this unit. This is an actuator that easily breaks down and its price exceeds 90,000. Shock absorbers in this design are not also cheap, from 26,000 rubles a piece, but at least there were relatively inexpensive replacements. A wreck from a decent manufacturer will cost about 600 rubles. It is much more difficult to come to terms with the malfunction of an active steering rack. Its price is now about 300,000 rubles and it can knock again already with a run of 20,000 km. True, without any special consequences for some time, but if it starts to leak, then serious repairs are inevitable. Replacement from ZF costs 180,000. In general, it is better to install a regular rail at all. It runs three times longer and it costs from 40,000 rubles in the performance of ZF restored and about 100 completely new. In fact, there was nothing new here. At the exit, the car got three of the most successful motors of the M54 series with a volume of 2.2, 520, 2.5, 525 and 3.0, 530 liters. 
They were installed until 2005 and this is probably the most reliable engine for the E60. Such motors could even claim the title of millionaires, having no special problems with the piston group up to runs of 350-500 thousand kilometers. In 2005 the line of motors was updated and engines of the N52 series appeared, the most unfortunate of which was the 2.5 motor, which was installed on the 5.2.3 and 5.2.5 models. 3.0 which was installed on the 5.3.0 is a little more reliable. In this line the resource is very limited. The Maslajor by 2.5 has already become legendary, and 3.0 with runs from 1.5 to 200,000 km is no longer far behind its younger brother. Although with proper maintenance and the use of very good oil it is quite viable. In 2007 the engine line was renowned again. renewed again. This time the inline 6 of the N53 series acquired a low resource fuel pump, which strongly depends on the quality of gasoline, and at the same time extremely capricious direct injection nozzles, which provided the owners with a fundamentally new level of headache. So, for example, now it was easy to catch a water hammer without even driving into a puddle. After all, the reason for this could be a leaking nozzle that poured 200 mm of fuel into the cylinder. In terms of the resource, everything is similar to N52, but the 2.5 engine has finally eliminated the problem with coking of the piston group, and now the resource of 2.5 and 3.0 engines is almost equal. And if the fuel equipment didn't fail, then the piston and liners could well live up to a run of 200,000 which is in general not bad against the background of modern BMW engines. The fate of the owners is slightly facilitated by the fact that there is no Velotronic on the N53, which means that there is no hassle with the regular replacement of its drive and arrows of this unit. While well, turbo engine of the N54 series, which appeared in 2007, turned out to be no better in reliability than aspired ones, which is logical. To the problems of the injection system, difficulties with the ignition modules were added. Now they fail twice as often, and the turbocharging itself which requires more thorough maintenance. But the resource has grown due to the heavier pistons and more frequent maintenance, and if the machine is not too annealed, then the oil consumption and wear will be less than on the N53. I don't want to talk about the only inline 4 in the family which appeared in 2007, because the motor of the N43 series, even on the 3rd series, caused criticism, and even on the heavier 5, it doesn't hit place with either fraction or reliability. This is just one. Of those that already in the third year of operation it's all in letters. V8s under the hood of the fifth series were also not very successful. Maslajor here is mainly a consequence of plug operation and the dying of all scraper rings, but the design is very complex. Velotronic is 8 cylinders, 3 times more fragile than on inline engines. As a result, a typical oil consumption per liter per thousand is already by the edge of pipe, and if you don't catch yourself in time, then a very expensive repair. Fortunately, with low oil consumption, the problem is completely solvable. Replacing the valve steam cells, switching to oil with better detergent properties and not coking, lowering the operating temperature. And now the engine is alive again. Unfortunately, there were only a few technically competent BMW owners, so they will drive to the last, believing that they have to eat oil. So it's difficult to find a car with such an engine in good or at least rever reversible condition. It's easier to look for an inline 6. There are no surprise here, mechanics on 5 are almost never been countered, and traditionally there were no problems with it. Dual mass play wheels still wear out and knock and are expensive, but they are being renovated. The clutch resource on engines of 3 liters is very small, and such cars are usually bought for racing, so can on the condition of the car below average. The automatic transmissions here are also all proven. With the Yonor engines, there are ZF 6HP19, with the older ones, slightly more powerful 6HP26. The total resource can be considered no more than sufficient, 100,000 km usually such boxes pass, and 250 is almost certainly not. Of course, the more often the oil changes, the more chances for a happy life of the automatic transmission. On this information about the problems of the BMW E60 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.